you want to know how to make it as a writer? You can't do it because the intro is playing. <laughs> want to know how to make it as a writer? Find out next on Geek Out SA. <laughs> Welcome back to Geek Out SA. It's Friday and we're having fun. And we're here with Aaron Swan, the author of Bright Star. Oh, that part right there. You can have it. You buy your own. But today, yes. Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, today we're talking about uh, how to make it as a writer. And uh, this, is, this is your first book, right? It is, yeah. This is my first published novel. So uh, first thing off... Tell us a little bit about what Bright Star is. Well, Bright Star is a young adult fantasy novel. Um, it is about a young girl named Andra. She is born into a life of servitude um, and doesn't think that she is meant to ever do anything. Stuck in this place. Um, and then a team of assassins comes to the palace where she's serving and they kind of botch it and nice. ends up taking Andra with them, and mm -hmm. she finds out about this secret rebellion that she had no idea was going on, um, and kind of gets thrust in with these rebels and starts to discover her own power and discover that she was meant for so much more than servitude. And there's magic and dragons and a little bit of romance, and yeah. Very cool. <laughs> magic and dragons. Magic That's and dragons, good. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hello, who doesn't like magic yeah. and dragons? <laughs> so speaking of dragons, like, mm -hmm. is, were there dragon books that you liked that inspired this or just kind of like came out of your head one day? Um, of, of course, I love dragon books. Um, I The first dragon books I read were the Dragon Riders of Pern. I picked those up in probably middle school, um, reading them in secret because, you know, back then fantasy wasn't super mainstream. You know, you were kind of called an big nerd for yeah. liking fantasy uh -huh. so dragon riders of Kern were really my introduction to fantasy and dragons um and i loved the aragon series as well like and game of thrones you know that's super popular now so yes definitely dragon books have been <laughs> a staple in my reading list. so it wasn't like you just woke up one day and you were like dragon book <laughs> nope <laughs> no lots of in inspiration from other authors there yeah well, we're having some trouble with the cameras again Oh no. So really? <laughs> yeah. Do you want Aaron and I to talk and then you can go try to fix it? Yay. No. What's no. happening? <laughs> What's going on? Do you wanna restart it? How about we turn it that way and then y'all talk? Okay. Aaron and I will talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, they say the camera's like just Freezing. We'll switch to this one. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, you see the messy office. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> is that good? Can you see us? Okay, but now we can't see Vincent? <laughs> All right, Aaron and I are taking over the show. All right, San Antonio. Well, Aaron and I are going to take over the show, and we're going to talk about books because... That she doesn't read anyway, so it's fine. Oh, that's <laughs> tragic. I know, I always give him a hard time about it. I'm like, you really need to read. So. Y'all doing okay? Okay, well, we're going to talk, and we're going to let them do their thing while All we right. talk. So we're going to talk about the book. <laughs> so do you think that, we were talking about Game of Thrones just a minute ago mm -hmm. before they interrupted us. Do you think that having that out in the mainstream media and having that kind of become more mainstream, like Marvel and stuff is becoming more mm -hmm. mainstream, do you think that's going to open up this genre of fantasy for people? Or? Oh, absolutely. It's it's great to me how right now geek culture is kind of like the cool culture now. You know, like I said, back when I was reading Dragon Riders of Pern, you know, fantasy and sci-fi and all that, like, I, I personally, at least, was kind of ashamed to be into it, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you. My yeah. sisters made fun of me for it, and I was afraid other people would, but yeah, now... With Game of Thrones being such a huge hit and the Star Wars movies being such a huge hit and, you know, comic books now being these huge blockbusters, it's 
so mainstream now and everybody goes to comic cons because you get to meet the stars of those movies right. and yeah. it's now cool to be really good at cosplay yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. yeah geek culture is just like really coming into its own right now and i think it's so great and it's definitely opening opening up the fantasy genre more to more readers yeah so do you think though you say you started as a reader of course when did you start writing um i first started writing in about fifth grade I had a great teacher over at Galm Elementary, actually, oh, really? is where that was. Yeah. Nice. Um, he always had us write a story with our vocabulary words of the week. And I started doing it then, and I just loved it. You know, writing little stories about me and my best friend and our imaginary adventures. Um, and ever since fifth grade, I just never stopped. I, yeah. After that class, I just kept writing for myself um, and really never stopped. Fan fiction angsty teen romances <laughs> nice. and of course you have to go through the angsty teen <laughs> romance phase right i'm still kind of going through it <laughs> like i'm revisiting it oh so. yeah <laughs> and then of course you know i got into writing fantasy in high school uh -huh. um that was when i finally wrote my first my first dragon book <laughs> so is this the first dragon book you've written is this um, the one you wrote in high school no or? this is actually the second one so the first one i wrote is actually kind of a prequel to this one even though bright stars being published first um, but the two storylines are mostly just kind of based in the same world. They're, the events are separated by like 200 years, so they stood alone really well. And um, this story performed a lot better for readers online, and so they opted to publish this one first. Well, can you explain to the to audience what you mean, like it performed better online? What does that mean? Like, they oh, not know yeah. Kind of what that means. Um, so I first posted Bright Star on fictionpress.com. And someone messaged me through that website and said that there's a new st story sharing website called Ink It, and they were running a fantasy competition at the time. And she said, I really like Bright Star, and I think it would do really well. And I actually hadn't touched Bright Star in years at this point. I just put it on Fiction Press and left it. Um, so I figured I had nothing to lose, you know? And so I put it onto Ink It, and it turned out that they... They have this whole algorithm that analyzes reader behavior. It assesses, you know, how many people actually read the total story, how long they're reading it, are they binge reading it through the night because they love it. And so after posting it on Inkit, the CEO of Inkit, um, Ali, he emailed me and he said, you know, Bright Star is doing really well and we want to help you get published. And I was like, what? You you're do like, that? Sweet. <laughs> I had no idea that they even did it. I just thought it was another fiction press. And you're like, is this a prank? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought it was like kind of a scam because there are those people who are predatory towards authors online who just, yeah, yeah, they just kind of want to buy all the rights to your book or they want you to pay them to publish it. Um, those vanity presses and mm -hmm. so I was like is this another one of those things yeah. and so I researched Inkit I researched Ali himself was like on his LinkedIn like is nice. this a real person <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed legit and so I was like all right let's do this and they looked can, at can you tell us a little bit about that company and about Inkit yeah, yeah. About Inkit. um so they started a few years ago um like I said they were brand new when I posted Bright Star on there which is I think it's about five years ago at this point um, and they were kind of changing the way publishing worked at that point. Um, and the traditional publishing industry, you have to go through so many gatekeepers for it. And Ali's idea was let's have readers decide what gets published instead of having to go through one specific agent and one specific editor at a specific publisher. Cause you know, that one person doesn't like it doesn't mean that millions of others won't. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that was their idea. And since then, they've grown a lot. Um, they have millions of users and thousands of authors on their site. Mm -hmm. And they have a new interactive reading app that's really cool. It, like, puts in sound effects and phone vibrations as you're reading. That's really yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I think that's called, Gal I don't know how to pronounce this, Galatia or Galatia. I'm not positive. Okay. But it's, mm -hmm, it's really neat. So... They have a lot of really cool ideas about changing the way things are published and changing the way we read. Um, so they were the ones who picked up Bright Star because it did so well with that algorithm that they had. And they But they didn't publish the physical book. No, right? they did not. Um, so this was the first one that they had picked from their website and they 
acted as my agent instead so of my yours publisher. Was the first one that they picked? Yes, That's mine was the awesome. first one off of wow. Ink It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the first one chosen by their algorithm. So yeah, they took it to the Frankfurt Book Fair in Germany. They're a German-based company. Oh, okay. Um, and so they picked up the publishers there for me, and Tor picked it up from there. And since then, Ink It does actually does a lot of publishing on their own. They um, do ebook as well as physical book publishing for the stories that they select. So they've really changed their business model since picking Bright Star. But yeah, they've been a great team to work with and a fantastic agent for me. So, so what are, what are some of the struggles that you were coming into when you were writing this book? Um, you know, when I wrote Bright Star, it was really just for me. I wasn't really thinking about trying to publish or thinking about writing it to appeal to a publisher i was just like i want to write about dragons <laughs> so nice. i'm gonna do it so the writing process for me was i was just in it for the fun you know i it was it was made it kind of a rambling storyline because <laughs> i was like well, let's just see what happens well, i didn't all the things just yeah in there. <laughs> i didn't i didn't really have a specific plan so really for me the hardest part of this was the editing process not the writing process itself, but editing something that was so big and had so many different elements that didn't necessarily all work perfectly together. Right. Trying to sort of Frankenstein my way through it, like <laughs> chopping out pieces and putting it back together and putting in new parts to make it still flow. So the editing process was yeah. really a lot harder for me than the writing process. Do you happen to like work off of the outline or how do you how do you keep yourself on track? So I am what the writing community calls a pantser. We go by the seat of our pants. Um, I'm not so much a plotter. Um, in the editing process, I did actually have to go back and outline everything and try and figure out the timeline and things that, you know, made it go on for way too long and mm -hmm. portions that I could pull out that didn't tie into everything. So I did have to go back and outline for the editing process. But did they request that of you, or did it just become something that was more easy for you to do? It was just something I had to do for me for to, you know, make it work because I was struggling so hard, like trying to make sure the timeline still lined up with all the cutting and rewriting I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that was just for me. But when I'm first writing a story, I usually just kind of have a general idea with a few plot points that I know want to happen. And then I just kind of write until all the dots connect. I'm I'm mostly a pantser, going by the seat of my pants. Yeah. Do you are is that something that you're going to continue to do, or do you are you thinking about doing some of the outlining and stuff before? You know, I've become a bit more plotty mm -hmm. um, in more recent years. Now that I'm you know thinking about writing for a readership rather than just writing for me, mm -hmm. um, so that has shifted a little. I do a little bit more plotting, but you know. Mostly, I still, I'm still a bit of a, I'm still mostly a pantser. Because, you know, mm -hmm. your process is your process, and that's yeah. how you write. That's, yeah. that's what works for you. And there's no one right way to do it except the right way for you. Right. And so trying to change your process to suit what others think you should be doing, I've tried that, and it just screws you up. You can't really find your flow if you're trying to do someone else's process. Right, and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like stifling you down in their box. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you're so Adam, focused uh, on hey these y'all. He says, hey, y'all, thanks for watching. Hey. Um, <laughs> also, uh, Pop Culture Geek 3, uh, Joe is checking us out, so uh, thanks for watching as well. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions for Aaron, please... Uh, Ask them, and uh, if you want to know something about writing. Um, I have a question for Aaron. Okay. Yes. I haven't read the book yet. <laughs> so there is there are dragons in here. What? How yes. integral are they to this storyline? Like? Uh, they're very integral. So um, Andra, she gets into a lot of trouble because she interrupts a pairing between they every year. Young boys are paired with a dragon, and she interrupts that and kind of screws it up and gets into a lot of trouble. One of the hatchlings doesn't pair because it's so distressed now. Oh, and no. so, <laughs> um, so yeah, there, there are dragon riders in this world. They're kind of like the, the main military force. Um, mm -hmm. The leader of the rebellion that she gets pulled into is a dragon rider, um, and she forms a very close friendship. Um, not giving away any spoilers. <laughs> she forms a very close friendship with a, with a wild dragon. 
okay. um, in the book, and that dragon is very important to the story as well. So yeah, they're they're main the dragons are main characters in the story okay, just good. as much yeah. as the people, yeah. <laughs> And they have their own little attitudes and oh, personalities. Okay, good, yeah, good. I like that. More the, dragons. The big thing about a book is it, it's a little bit more than just the writing. Uh, oh. that, and that's why you get mm -hmm. a publisher. Uh, to where it comes to like the book cover, like what, how did you get the book cover done for this book? The book cover. So that was all my publisher that handled that, which I love my book cover. Can I just say that? Yeah. It is so it's, gorgeous. I'm yeah, obsessed it's with it. It's I love like. It. It's the lock screen on my phone. It's my screensaver on my computer. <laughs> I have it everywhere. I'm obsessed like, with it. I did this. <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my publisher actually found the artist. Um, I talked to my editor about like ideas, the general concepts that we wanted, um, which of course I wanted Andra and her dragon friend, Kiri, on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, and then the artist just kind of ran with it and did an amazing job. Um, Larry Rostand is the one who did it. He actually did the the redesigns on the Game of Thrones books as well. Oh, nice. So yeah, he's incredible. Did you get any kind of say? Did you get to see it during the process? Or? Um, I saw what you know his first initial product product, and then just made a few minor changes in the suggestion, like make the dragon more violet colored because that's the color of Kiri, and to shorten Andra's hair because her hair is cut short um, in the story. So really minor changes uh but i loved it from the very initial thing so well, that's good though that I, you got to have some input yes into that. yeah mm -hmm. so if you write a book after this which i'm assuming you would like to do yes, yes absolutely <laughs> does it go like does the publisher automatically have a certain number of books that they expect you to write for them or how does that work it depends on your initial contract for me specifically um i'm just contracted for bright star um but tor gets the first rights to view anything else that I write, especially related to this world. Um, so I have to send it to them first, and if they They are more of like a space base. Have you ever heard of an? The publisher, because you have publishers. I mean, Tor, my publisher, is specifically science fiction and fantasy. Um, so they're always going to be looking for those genres. So really, it's based on your publisher. You really just have to know which publishers to look for for what you've written. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And what do you think about getting rejection? You didn't have to actually go through that No, process, I didn't. <laughs> I was nice. really lucky, yeah. But what do you think? I mean, I've heard before <coughs> that sometimes it can be, you know. It's brutal, yeah. Yeah, is it? It is, yeah. Um, I actually am really in the writing community on Twitter, and so I see a lot from other authors where, <coughs> I'm sorry, fickle. It's okay. <laughs> um, they have been rejected 20, 30 times. Yeah, I've and, seen that too. And most publishers won't even look at your manuscript if it's not coming through an agent. So you have to first query agents, and then agents have to query publishers for you. So you have multiple rounds of protections that you have to go through, but you just you have to keep doing it. Well, did Inkit help you find an agent? Or did they you are my agent. They are yeah. your mm -hmm. agent. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Inkit became my agent and did that pitching for me at the Frankfurt. So there. you really kind of got past some of the really painful parts <laughs> I of the did. whole I <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I win at writing. <laughs> <laughs> I got so lucky, and I fully recognize that. Um, I did 
a couple of queries on something completely unrelated to this. Um, in my senior year of college, I only queried two local publishers and I got one rejection and one request for a full manuscript. So I went 50-50 on that. <laughs> but nice. yeah, so, but yeah, rejections are really just a part of the job. If you want to go traditional publishing, you got to be able to have a tough skin. Yeah. And go through that. Well, and then you said for editing, too, you kind of have to have a tough skin as well, right? <coughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, yes. The editing process, if you're going traditional, you suddenly go from having this baby that you've been working on for usually years. Writers yeah. will work on books for years a lot of times. You go from having this baby that's all yours to suddenly a team of people that want to give it a total makeover. <laughs> and you're just like, don't touch my baby. My <laughs> um, yeah. So you <laughs> have me. to you have to really recognize that if they're asking you to cut out a portion of your story or to change something in your story, it's usually for your benefit. It's for your book's benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, because they know the industry. Like especially as a debut, like I am, like you have to rely a lot on their expertise and just trust that it's not personal. <laughs> if they are asking you to change something, it's not personal. It's all professional and and it's actually to help you out. It's Absolutely, not actually yeah. to do anything <laughs> to upset you or harm you or harm you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, they're they're behind you. You got to remember they are on your side. They want to be successful. It's like yeah. jumping out of the plane, you know, to mm -hmm. have a tandem skydive. Because they want to make money off <laughs> the book too. Live too. They and do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make money off your book, so they're trying mm -hmm. to make it good. <laughs> And, and a lot of times there's a lot of things happening out in society that may um, affect how a book may mm -hmm. be sold. Can you give us a little more experience yeah. with that that you may have heard? Uh huh. Yeah. So um, I actually had kind of an experience in, early in the editing process. So in the initial um, final copy of Bright Star, Andre was a slave, which, you know, happens a lot in fantasy. Lot so I fantasy. thought nothing of it. You know, that's just the way it was. Um, and in this, in the final version, the printed version, she's an indentured servant. Servant, It's a labor contract that she can work her way out of. But anyways, um, in the initial rounds of editing, my editor said, you know, I really feel like we need to change, we need to get rid of the slave storyline. It's kind of a trigger hot topic. Um, so we kind of want to veer away from that. We don't want to offend anyone with it. And I was like, really? Like, that's like part of who she is, you know, right. and it happens all the time in fantasy. Right. And so, yeah. But, you know, I said, all right, you, you know, the readership, you know, the industry, I, I can work with indentured servitude. Like, I'll make this work. I'm actually really loved the way it turned out. Oh, good. I loved the way it worked into the storyline. But um, anyways, a couple months after she asked me to make that change, I heard about this other author. Um, I can't remember her name, but her book is called Blood Air. And it's about a princess who gets who becomes a slave, and she got ripped apart online. It was brutal because people didn't agree that she should be writing a slave storyline, and so she actually um canceled the publication of her book because of it. Wow. Um, and I was just like, I am so glad I listened to my editor. Yeah. There, like, she really knew what was going on at the time in YA readership and way better than I did right and recognize that that could possibly be a problem and I'm so glad I changed that she is publishing her book now she, oh, she is. she's rescheduled publication that author but yeah I was just so grateful that I listened to my editor then so what other topics do you need to stay away from making a YA book you know there's no hard and fast rule on but you know in YA you just the general rules keep a PG-13. Right. Um, yeah. anything, <laughs> anything that you would see in a PG-13 movie is generally okay. But, you know,
Well, I kind of actually have in my head, um, this is a part of a series, with distinct characters, distinct storylines, and separate books, mm -hmm. capable of standing alone, but tied together, being in the same world. Um, so I've actually started the sequel to Bright Star. Oh, nice. um, it's not contracted or anything yet. Um, it's called Blood Moon, and I can't always say who the characters are. Okay, <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> but it takes place about 18 years after the events of Bright Star. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So Andra and the male main character, Kale, he, they are both in it. Um, so they're, but kind of as side characters, they're not the main focus. Oh, okay. And that's kind of my vision is to have these things where the book stands by itself, mm -hmm. but you can see the connection. Okay. So that's, like that. that's my goal. I have other projects as well that are unrelated. So, but mostly in that fantasy genre. Yeah. Or? Mostly in the fantasy genre. Yeah. Not no horror. No, no, not really a horror writer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I branch out at all, I'll probably just be more angsty teen romance. <laughs> You're like Twilight. Watch out! I'm coming for you. No, <laughs> no vampires. I no, don't no think, vampires no. either. <laughs> well, so you were talking about having it stand alone and having it like be in that world and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk a lot about. I love Star Wars, and mm -hmm. I love. I'm like probably one of the only people on the planet who loves what they've done with Star Wars. <laughs> I like that we still get to stay in that universe and we see some of the things continuing to happen over and mm -hmm. over again. Like if you watch those families and you watch that continuing yeah. to happen. Mm -hmm. And so now they're letting the world be, you know, with Ray and Finn mm -hmm. and Poe. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're still there in the world. Yeah. But so... It, do you like the way some of that is starting to happen or do you prefer a book that kind of stays with the same characters because there are geeks out there that want to hold on to the character right they're going to oh, want to hold course. on to your character I mean, you love your characters and you you never want to say goodbye to a, the characters in a good book mm -hmm. but you know i i like it both ways i love meeting new characters and falling in love with new characters and seeing their journeys because, you know, everybody's got a journey and yeah. you got, more people have stories to tell. You know, more characters have stories to tell. So, I mean, I, I love following the same character for books and books at a time. I will follow them through their entire life if I can. <laughs> but, you know, I have no problems with being introduced to new characters like Ray and Finn. I, I love Ray and Finn. I think they're fantastic. Me too. So. <laughs> well, you were saying earlier that you had done some fan fiction writing as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that writing the fan fiction gives you that practice to kind of be able to see from other characters' mm -hmm. perspectives? Fan fiction is fantastic. Um, whether it's just, whether you want to call it practice or just fun, I mean, it's wonderful to me. Like, <laughs> that is an aspect of fandom that I think is really underappreciated. <laughs> like, it's such a great way to learn to take established characters and recognize decisions that they would make, things that are in character for them, be able to write in character, as well as introducing original characters into a world. You get to play in this sandbox that mm -hmm. someone else has created, but you get to bring your own toys. And it's so much fun. And I actually still write fan fiction. Do you? Yes, I do. When I get burnt out on one of my main projects, I'm like, I'm going to go write my Walking Dead fan fiction or my <laughs> Supernatural fan fiction. And I still love it. It's just for me. I don't post it anywhere. It's, But it keeps that creativity going when you're feeling burnt out on something that you're working on and you just want to stop writing. It's so nice to be able to turn to something where there's no pressure or it's just for fun and play in someone else's sandbox for a little while instead of trying to build your own world you get to play in someone else's and it's great well i always have a big problem with that like i'll be talking to somebody about a book mm -hmm. and i'll talk about something that happened and they're like that didn't happen and i'm like mm, in my version of it <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty like, sure oh wait happened. that was my fan fiction <laughs> never mind <laughs> like i'm pretty sure it happened like that and they're like no it didn't I'm, like, yeah. well, I'm trying to look and i'm like oh i think i did oh. make that up in my head <laughs> Um, so I do know some of my students are watching and mm -hmm. they are interested in fan fiction. Where is a good place for them to go to maybe post fan fiction? Do you know of any websites um, or anything? I use fanfiction.net. I know that's kind of old school now. That's sort of like the, the MySpace <laughs> of story sharing these days. Yeah, we don't talk about MySpace. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> that's old news. Um, but Wattpad is kind of the go-to right now. 
what it's, y'all um, doing? <laughs> something's happening over there. Yeah, they're they're like distracting us a lot today. Um, <laughs> sorry, people, we're distracted. So sorry. Wattpad, you were saying? Wattpad is kind Wattpad. of the go-to these days for um not only fan fiction but also original stories. They do both. Um, I actually think Inkit also has a fan fiction section. Oh, do I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah, they take fan fiction as well as original stories. So yeah, those would be the two I recommend. Um, is Inkit it like or Wattpad. Ink. It or is it Inkit.com? I N K I T T dot com. Oh okay. So, yeah. Inkit.com. Inkit with two T's dot com. Yeah. And uh, so, do you know if they they're still looking for authors to like help with always. the process? Yeah, really? they're always taking new people and publishing new books. Yeah, I actually know a couple people personally who. They picked up and published them, and yeah, they've had a great experience too. Well, that's good. Um, <laughs> did you have any questions, or I get to keep going? Okay. okay. <laughs> I hate to um, <laughs> I hate to step on Vince's toes. I'm always <laughs> stepping on Vince's toes because I talk too much. So I was like, "Did you want to say something, honey?" But he's working on the technology bless. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to ask you for the viewers. A lot of the viewers, obviously, they watch us because it's a geek show, so they probably want to know, like. Aside from reading, which I think is a huge geek thing, just like <laughs> reading in general, reading comics, reading books, mm-hmm. what other like fandoms are you into? So I grew up not in a geeky household, not at all. You know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't watch Star Wars until just a few years ago. I didn't grow up with sci-fi and fantasy in my household. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I grew up watching Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. I loved anime nice. um, growing up and manga. I loved reading manga, but I had to borrow my friend's manga and, you know, read it in my room because my sisters would make fun of me. <laughs> sisters? Yeah. Shame on, Shame on you. <laughs> um, You're like, look who's talking. Oh, no. <laughs> my super geeky book. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I grew up with anime and manga and then I have more recently, as I'm coming out of my geek closet, um, I love Game of Thrones, both the show and the books. I, I, you know, started getting into Star Wars as when the new movies came out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm still discovering my geek side. Yeah. I'm discovering my inner geek still. Do you so. ever play any kind of like tabletop games or anything like that? I do not. My husband is super into Warhammer. Really? That's so he's got like the platinum geek card. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, as a Warhammer geek, you win the geek uh, yes. games. The Olympics. So, no, I, I don't play tabletop games. I play video games. I love the Tomb Raider video games. The oh, revamped really? ones. Yeah. I love them. I think you would be a good role player just from like talking to you. Like, I think you would love a good role playing game. You, you just, know, like, I've take on that character. I've discovered that ba- basically writing is DMing and controlling all the characters as well. Yes, <laughs> it's the it same totally thing. Is. Oh yeah, my God. so the role playing stuff is just it's cooperative writing. Yeah, you'd, be, you'd make an awesome DM. Yeah, yeah. So I you think should try so it. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday. <laughs> My husband's trying to get me into a role playing thing that he does with his brothers, but I've you I've passed do it. I thus think far. You, no, no, you should do it. I think you would really love it because it's just so it's so fun to just get to be that character, like you uh-huh, created yeah. the character, and then you get to kind of have you know their affectations and things like that yeah. when you're talking and just be silly, and so it's a lot of fun. So what would you recommend? I have several students. Steve says I like playing with my dolls. You like playing dolls? <laughs> oh, that that's my husband. Hi, babe. <laughs> we call them his dolls. Oh, the Warhammer. Oh, his Warhammer. His Warhammer models. <laughs> I call them dolls. She's as bad as I am. Okay, so I just have to tell you really quickly. I have been banned from my friends playing miniatures because I get really bored. I have a small attention span as well, unless it comes to reading. And so then... So then I was getting like the miniatures and I was like, oh god, the army attacks. And then I was like, press, like, you know, old matching school, them like, together. Yeah. I was like, smash, smash, smash. And they were like, uh uh-uh. uh, uh uh. You don't get to Oh play yeah, my anymore. husband would freak out Your if I did that. Would freak out. <laughs> he puts so much time into painting them and assembling them. So. <laughs> he gets really anxious when our, if our toddler gets around his oh, Warhammer bet. models. Yes. He's like, don't touch those. Don't touch them, please. Yeah. They were $9 billion, number one. Basically. And- <laughs> So what advice can we give uh, to like the young writers out there? Because you started so mm-hmm. young. So I think I did, that yeah. that's great that you know kind of where that comes from. What advice would you give them as far as moving forward with their writing? Well, like I said earlier, um, your process is your process. There's no right way to do it. You know, follow the way you want to write. There are no rules. I mean, there are rules, but you can break them. <laughs> so, um, so don't let anyone tell you you're doing it wrong. 
Okay. Do it your way. Um, your way is the right way. Be a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> and your way might change, and that's fine. Um, also, just don't stop. Like like I said about the rejections and stuff, that's going to happen. If And if you're sharing online, you're going to get bad reviews. That doesn't mean you should stop writing. It just means you're learning. I mean, I still get bad reviews. Like, it happens. It happens. Like, and yeah. if you're trying to traditionally publish, you're going to get rejected. It's going to happen. It happened to J.K. Rowling. It happened to every author that's ever been King, published. Like, yeah. Every author that, ever, that has ever been published has been rejected. And so you can't stop. Whatever happens, just don't stop. I heard, or I read, I think, from Stephen King. I don't know. I heard or read that they recommend that you just write the whole thing. Like, don't go back and read what you've read because you get stuck in, like, this loop. Did you ever do that? Do you write all the way through? Or what do you kind of do as far as that goes? No, I actually do a little back reading. Like I said, you can break the rules. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, everybody's different. A lot of people will write out of order. They'll write whatever scene comes to them and then go back and fill in the gap. Um, so I personally write beginning to end. I write chronologically. Um, but I do... I like when I sit down to write, I like to go back and reread the last few pages. I feel like it helps me get into the flow of the story mm -hmm. to remember where I was at and remember what was happening. And so that's the way I do it. Do you write every single day? I try to. Do yeah. You? Um, you know, it kind of just depends. A lot of people will tell you you have to write every day. You don't. You can break that rule you can too. Break the rules. Um, because uh, Aaron's all about breaking the rules. <laughs> I'm a rebel. Watch out. <laughs> um, but, you know, if. It shouldn't be something that you have to, like, struggle to do. You need a break. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a job. I mean, no matter how much you love your job, um, you need a weekend sometimes. You need to take a break. And that's okay as long as you keep coming back to it. Yeah. Just don't give up. Just keep coming back. You can take that break. You can step away. You can switch gears and write something completely different. Write your fan fiction. Write a different story. Switch gears if you need to, but just keep coming back to it. That's mm -hmm. what really matters. It doesn't have to be every day, but keep coming back. So speaking of coming back, because we just have a few more minutes, are you, do you think you're going to go back to that novel that you wrote in high school that kind of started this whole process for Bright Star? I hope so. So I, you know, envision it as a series, like I said. And so my hope is that, um, so that prequel is called The Rising Sun. My hope is that we will go back to that do a thorough edit because you know I was 17 and the right, rating's right, not right. fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> we will go back to that and it will be Way published. Way more teenage angst than there should be now. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Um, <laughs> my hope is that we will go back to that and publish it as a prequel eventually. Okay. That would be great. Well, I can't, yeah, wait. I so. can't wait to read this. So I have my own copy and I'm going to be reading it. I actually do book talks. Um, as awesome. well for like my teacher channel <laughs> and I think a lot of my students would like this so I will read this and then I'll be doing a book talk on this so that you can you guys can see what I have to say because you know my opinion matters no <laughs> <laughs> okay um we just have a couple of more minutes are you mm -hmm. doing any signings or anything here from San Antonio I know that you spent a lot of your time and you graduated here in San Antonio but you mm -hmm. don't really live here anymore right yeah. um, do you know if you're going to do any book signings or anything um, here? right now all I, all I have scheduled is some school visits um, so that's all I'm doing while I'm in San Antonio is visiting a few classrooms and school libraries and stuff to talk to kids and encourage them to write because right. you know, it's important yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's all I'm doing right now in San Antonio um, I have a book signing coming up in Salt Lake City which is close to where I live in October that'll be my first official book signing event nice. <laughs> Well, we'll have to post that up and show people what you're doing. And then if you ever come back down this way, just let us know and we'll let people know. So I will be coming back out. all the time. My family lives down here. So we're here probably at least twice a year. Nice, <laughs> nice. All right. Did you want to come sit on my lap, honey, and say goodbye? Oh. So, Aaron, thanks for coming out and uh, hanging out with us. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. Uh, uh, I can't see you. <laughs> sorry about all the issues with the, uh, with the video, but. Happens. What happens. Uh, but thanks for checking us out. I'm Vince. Aaron and I are entertaining. Just kidding. I'm Colleen. That's Aaron and that's Stuart over there. You got to say. <laughs>